Hi, this is Angela from North Carolina, and I am making a very, very delicious, inexpensive, and easy chicken pot pie. I've made it forever in a day, and I think you'll like it too. So, let me tell you what I did first. In this colander, I cut up cubes of red potato, and I cut up quite a few carrots, and I boiled them in water first, just till they were kind of tender crisp, not soggy. So then I put them on top of a bag of mixed vegetables that had corn, peas, and green beans that was frozen, and they're now all ready to go. Let me move those out of the side. Meanwhile, I cooked some fresh organic boneless chicken and it's of course white meat, this breast, and I cooked it in my own water and I made my own broth. There's a piece of chicken I missed. Now, of course, you can buy store-bought broth. You can buy a rotisserie chicken already cooked. It's your prerogative. In this pan here, I sauteed one onion and a few stalks of celery and a little bit of olive oil. I cooked them very tender. So now you see that I have my mixed vegetables I have my carrot and my potato that I cooked in a little bit of water for a while and drained. I have my celery and onion. I have my white chicken meat. And here is cream of chicken soup, candles. And I have poured my broth in here from the chicken. I used the broth from the chicken that I cooked. I'm making this for someone else since I don't eat chicken. Now, the topping, you could make a homemade topping or you could use Bisquick. And if you don't want to go to the expense to buy buttermilk, if you don't use buttermilk very often, then get a little bit of lime juice or lemon juice. Add a drop to your regular, either your low fat or your... Um, fat-free milk and put that in your milk let it sit for a little bit and it will curdle and you now have buttermilk so I don't know if anybody's ever made buttermilk that way you can also use a dab of vanilla vanilla vinegar I was looking at something so I don't believe in dirtying up a lot of pans. So I'm gonna mix everything in the Pyrex dish that I'm going to cook in. This Pyrex dish right here. Now in this bowl here, I cheated. This is Bisquick mixed with the buttermilk that I made. And I like it kind of thick. So let me get it out of the way. I'm gonna throw in my chicken first. Get it all stirred around. The frozen vegetables that had the hot vegetables on top, they sat and drained for a while, and all of the moisture came off of the frozen vegetables. Can you see this cool colander, the stars? My mother got this as a wedding present. I gave it to my daughter years ago. Isn't it neat? She would have been married, I guess, 72 years, so it's ancient. But I just love it. It's just so cool. Okay. So, I now am stirring up my um, chicken, my vegetables. Let me throw in the celery and onion. You could, I could have used more. I just wasn't up to cutting a whole bunch of it up. 
and I had made two pot pies, so. Of course, you could just put raw celery and onion in there, but the, do it a little bit in your olive oil, and it just gives it so much more flavor. And I'm not real big on salt and pepper. I did use a little bit of sea salt, though, when I was cooking the chicken. So now I'm going to mix all this real well. And as you can see, get my lime juice out of the way. You can chunk the chicken. You can shred the chicken. It's just whatever your family likes. I've always kind of shredded mine because I like to make sure that they get a little piece of chicken like in every bite, you know. And I, you see I didn't make my carrots too big, but I wanted you to be able to taste the carrot. Sometimes I use succotash, the frozen succotash with the lima beans and the corn. And if I had had them, I would have added a bag of frozen lima beans because I think they just make chicken pot pie. So now we're all stirred up. Our chicken is spread. There we go. Oops, I just found a clump. Hold on. Okay. And another big clump. I shred by hand. I'm not going to touch anything, but some containers at this point. All right. So here we go. This is my 9 by 13 inch. Now I've got my can of cream of chicken soup. This is the large can. And like I said, you can use a box of broth, you can use a can of broth, or you can use your own broth if you boil your own chicken. And it is good, you know, made with rotisserie chicken, if you buy one on the way home, it can make it so much quicker to whip this out. But I don't, don't make it with like canned potato or canned carrot to make it easier. It's just not good. Has no taste. And I saved my broth in case this gets a little bit dry. I'm going to pour more broth over it. Okay, here we go. It does look a little bit dry. Let me pour it in here so I can get some of that chicken soup back out. All the vegetables will absorb. It's definitely not something you want to have too dry. I have made the mistake over the years of making it too wet, and then you can't eat it for a day. go. I think I'm going to drizzle just a little tiny bit more. Nothing worse than dry pot pie. I make mine vegetable, but I didn't make me one today. But usually I make a vegetable pot pie for myself since I don't, you know, eat chicken. Okay, now here we go. Final step. My oven is preheated to 325. Excuse me, 350. And I just drop it on. And it's kind of lumpy, it doesn't matter. But I do make sure I cover everything. At the end, you can kind of smear the biscuit topping over 
You can also, of course, make your own homemade biscuit topping with baking soda and then salt, flour. I used to do that, but Bisquick is so nice. It was really made for the working woman or the woman that's got a lot going on. We are just about finished. I don't measure. I just kept adding my milk to the biscuit till I got a consistency that I thought looked like it would make a good topping. I could freeze that broth I have left over to make rice pilaf or something later if I wanted to, but I think I'll just give it to the dogs tonight as a little treat on top of their dog food. You see how I'm trying to pull it over to the edges? And of course, you cut it in squares. So it's going to cook at 350 for probably just about 35 minutes because everything in it is already cooked. You pop it in. It's really heavy. You can make two 8 by 8s When my children were in college, they always wanted to take them home. So I always made them in an 8 by 8 pan. This is one that just came out of the oven. It's um, one so I could show you what it looks like. When it was almost finished, it's hot as heck, I'm sorry. When it was almost finished, I took it out and I rubbed a little bit of real butter over the top to give it a real golden brown look. Isn't it a pretty little pie? There is nothing like chicken pot pie. So I hope you like this recipe. And thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. And if you would hit the thumbs up, and if you'd like to subscribe, I do try to cook simple recipes. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.